Welcome everybody to uh, Tri-Cities Community Television. My name is Patrick McCarthy. We're here in the Fountainhead Studios on Westwood in Port Coquitlam. And again, we are bringing you uh, candidate interviews to help you make your decision October 15th in the 2022 municipal election in BC. Uh, my guest today is Justin Smith. Justin, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much for having me. I'm super excited. I'm excited too because you're the youngest person I've interviewed. So I feel like I, I feel like uh, there's hope in this world that, that I have a young person that's interested in politics. I I, um, I first got into politics. It was 10 years ago. It was Obama versus Romney in the United States presidential election. I walked up to my parents' room with a bowl of popcorn. I've been hooked on politics since. So. Uh, Maybe it was inevitable that I was ending up here, but I'm happy nonetheless. Well, well uh, yeah, I, it's kind of funny. I, I think uh, some people would find their, that's probably your Super Bowl, really, if you, if you like politics. So yeah. So how? Um, so tell us a bit about yourself. I mean, I know, I know you're you know relatively young, but to give us a sense of uh, who you are and where you come from, and and sort of why you're running for politics. For sure. So um, I've lived in Port Coquitlam nearly my entire life. I think it's 21 or 22 years. It's a long time, at least for me. Um, and uh, going through, I've always had, kind of as I mentioned, a little bit of the interest in politics. So I graduated from Riverside Secondary in 2016. I was looking into journalism, and then eventually I was like, well, a potential pathway into journalism is uh, you know, political science. So I go through there, and all of a sudden I realized all the things I thought I knew about politics, uh, you don't know a lot more than you actually do know. So I went through, uh, did my degree, and eventually I got a co-op at, com uh, at a company called New Mode, and they're a political advocacy company. They help uh, people pretty much engage with their elected representatives. And that's why I started thinking more about how do we actually make sure people's individual voices can be heard? How do we make sure that if you have an issue, it can be heard by a city council, an MLA, an MP? Uh, so I put a lot of effort into that. And then as city council elections were coming around, I started thinking, are there areas that we can improve here? I think that Park Coquitlam, we can do a little bit more for political engagement. So I decided to throw my hat in the ring. Yeah, well, I think uh, people would say that young people aren't politically engaged, right? Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that too. It's one of the things, every provincial election, federal election, I go, I, I bug my friends. I'm like, please, let's go out to vote. I um, actually occasionally drive my friends out to vote. It's something that I feel a lot of young people feel disenfranchised or their votes aren't heard. Um, there's so many pressing issues that we're facing, whether it be the existential dread of climate change or the affordability crisis we're in, and they feel that their voices aren't heard. I feel like if we give people a genuine voice at the table and show them that it can be done a better way, um, we may be able to start to engage them more, but it's not something I could just do in Port Coquitlam. This needs to happen at every level of government. So you, you actually went to SFU to, to, I mean, you like politics so much, you went to SFU and did poli-sci. Right? Yeah, so I, I went through, um, I was debating like sociology, economics, but I took my first poli-sci class and about halfway through I just realized like it perfectly clicked for me because it's not so much about like how do you win elections or how do you be a politician, it's really explaining how our world works and how political systems could influence us or um, yeah, pretty much influence our ideas. So I started thinking, um, how could we improve democracy in Canada? And one of my favorite courses I took was comparative politics. And you start looking and comparing what works in some countries, what doesn't work in other countries. And I feel like if we treated politics more of um, we're working on things, we're learning from other people, uh, we could progress so much farther. So the ideas of like electoral reform, improving our voting systems, those are all things I really cared deeply about when I was doing my degree. So one of your platforms is affordability. Yeah. So, so I, I see affordability as two conversations, one to someone your age yeah. and one to someone my age or older. Absolutely. So, so what would be the conversation you'd have with, or with people who want to vote for you at your age group? So if I'm uh, talking to people in my age group, um, I would honestly start with an anecdotal evidence. I grew up in Port Coquitlam. I wanted to stay in Port Coquitlam and looking around at my uh, first apartment options with my roommates. We went through, we checked out many places, and we couldn't find somewhere that worked for us, so we ended up having to leave the city, despite really wanting to stay in Port Coquitlam. So it's thinking about the ideas of what are the issues that city council can take over and maybe do a little bit more work to make it so we can stay in Port Coquitlam if we want to be here. So it's very much, I think, for people my age, uh, housing uh, security, housing affordability with rents uh, so high. So that's where I'm going to tackle affordability with people my age. Um, I think that conversation, you could also extend it um, just, 
Just when you talk about young people and affordability, the concept of moving out and now you're back. Yeah. So uh, uh, is, did, did you win the lottery or did something happen? I had to get another roommate. So found another roommate. We were able to move closer to home and um, I'm a little bit biased towards Port Coquitlam, but I'm so happy to be back and be able just to just walk into downtown, go enjoy what makes Poco special. Um, I've always loved uh, Gates Park, uh, Skyline Park. Me and my friends, we'd go up there and uh, take pictures. So it's just like, it's great to feel closer to home again, but it, we had to get another roommate to make it financially feasible and we had to get lucky with a rent listing. Mm. It wasn't that um, housing prices dropped, it's that we found a specific case that worked for us. But I know that's not gonna be the same for everybody and other people aren't gonna be as fortunate or lucky to be on Facebook Marketplace that same day. Yeah, no, but I think though, you, you, the, I think for, you know, from some of the folks who've lived in Poco for a while, it's like, you know, you may have lived together as a, with a bunch of roommates because yeah. it was fun. Mm -hmm. But now you're, you're financially have to live together, which, which to, to live here, right? Yeah, absolutely, it's, yeah. it's um, looking feasibility. Like I would have loved to moved out by myself. I love my roommates, but I would have loved to have my own place yeah. and it's just financially, uh, not feasible for a lot of people, especially if you're working a uh, low income job or kind of those entry level jobs and trying to work your way up. There's a lot of income, in, income insecurity. So I gives up people my age, a lot of anxiety, I think. Yeah. So, so then if for affordability issue uh, uh, strategies that the city of, of Port Coquitlam could implement to help that, do you have any ideas? Yeah, I think we need to kind of look um, when we're talking about rezoning or the different types of housing that we're building. You will need a mix between rental buildings and then also um, I think the idea of rent to own is a good idea and then also strata building for people who would like to buy and live in Port Coquitlam. But it's the types of housing we're building. Um, we can go build high rises, but what are the types of high rises we're going to build? Um, are we going to build ones that are going to have every amenity and essentially just drive up the prices? Or are we going to go and see what will actually work for people? How do we keep prices down? Um, and there's different ways you can work with the de uh, developers there. So I think just not endlessly building single family homes and having a variety of housing options, um, that's probably the first step that council could take. Yeah. So then, then uh, for me, you know, if you're talking to my demographic and as an old Poco kind of person who's lived there for a while, like we're like, well, this is so great, the housing is so expensive, you know? Yeah. So, so what would you say to, to folks like us? So I think it's, um, I think we kind of could take it first from a place of, I don't want to go radically change everything. I think we still need to go and protect, uh, you know, the houses that are there. I don't want to go kick anybody out of houses. Um, I also think that we need to uh, pay attention to the areas that we're building things in and making sure that it works for existing communities. And also engaging existing homeowners and making sure that we're bringing them into the conversation as well. Um, and I also think um, as we're going through, uh, High housing prices uh, can be great for people, um, but at the end of the day, we do need to make sure that the next gener generation of people can be stable and start to build their lives the same way that my parents were able to. Yeah, so so from from for me, I, that's that's what I find more worrying about yeah. that is it, is it's great to have that mm -hmm. value, but you've got to move uh, to kind of realize the value. Yeah. Like my, around me, my neighbors are are moving. Yeah. And they're probably either leaving their kids here or they're taking them with them. Yeah, that. But the community is sort of changing because of that. That actually happened exactly to my best friend. Uh, his parents uh, stayed in Port Coquitlam pretty much throughout his entire education. The second he graduated, they said, "Hey, it's great. We love it here, but these like our housing price, like our house is worth this much. We can barely afford the property taxes. We need to move away." So they had to move away, yeah. um, and he had to move out and live by himself at 18 years old, which. Uh, for some people that works great, for other people it can be a little bit of a difficult adjustment. Mm. Um, so I don't think that the pure valuation of your house really tells the whole story. Yeah. And you're right, people do have to move away to realize yeah. that value. Yeah, house rich, cash poor. Yeah. So so the, we always hear the term affordable housing yes. and market market value or yeah. market housing. What, does, what do those two words mean to you? So when I'm thinking about market value housing, we're really taking a big look uh, picture of what does the free market value your house. Um, when you're taking a look at uh, market value, that doesn't necessarily mean if something's a fair price, it's affordable. Those two, two things don't go together. That's why you see with some housing developments, they will consciously carve out units that will uh, units that will be below market value. That's one way that we can achieve affordable housing. The other way that we can go through is um, if you increase the supply of housing, we may be able to drive down the market value a little bit. So you can approach it through the free market um, lens and then you could also go through 
uh, specifically when you're developing the housing. Um, so, so for me, when I look at that, like, what can you when you look at affordable housing and yeah. you look at this this sort of concept of affordable housing over market, like, what do you see uh, you could do on council to, or what can council do to kind of help that along? I think that we need to go and uh, foster relationships with developers and also pick the developers that we're going to work with. And as a council, we need to make our priorities, priorities uh, clear that we need to rapidly expand on the affordable side. There always needs to be space for the standard market housing. But if we go and provide opportunities to go build affordable housing, um, I think that needs to be our main priority. So, so, um, so one of the things you talked about is this kind of concept of engagement. Yeah. Um, so do you see that, is that engagement with your demographic as in the younger demographic of our, of our community or just in general across the whole board? I, I, I approach it um, general across the board. I think that we're really lagging on young people engagement, but I think that there are interest groups, there are advocacy groups across Port Coquitlam that aren't having their voices heard. And I also think that there's just people in our community that aren't having their voices heard. So we need to go and be proactive about reaching out to people and providing more opportunities to have your voice heard and bringing people to the table. And, and so how do you see, I mean, you're a younger person running. Yeah. So the, the big question is, you know, the younger vote is not active. Yeah. So, so how do we do that or how do you do that? So I think um, either as a city councilor or just an engaged person in the city, we need to figure out where the young people are and when, where they're spending their time. Uh, we need to look at the social media apps where maybe 10 years ago we'd be focusing a lot on Facebook engagement. Currently, we may need to look at how do we reach people on Instagram? How do we somehow apply municipal politics to TikTok? As far as like as difficult that, as that may be to imagine, if we can go and deliver information directly to people and in a fashion that they will be willing to engage with, young people have opinions, they do want to be heard. It's just finding ways to deliver that information directly to them. Because as amazing as it is for our council meetings to be streamed online for you to be able to hop on, I don't know if there's going to be a lot of 18 year olds or 20 year olds who are going to have time to go specifically onto the Porco Quitlam website and watch a two hour video. Or if we're finding ways to condense that information to inform them and then providing them easy opportunities to either contact us or meet up with us, uh, that may be able to help. So really, you're the only campaign that's running on TikTok because because everybody else is on paper or newspaper or yeah, Facebook. Yeah, I, I, I would also myself <laughs> have to learn a little bit more about TikTok. I'll say that my friends are a little bit smarter on that, but they've... Uh, You've got your tribe there, so you're good. Yeah, we will learn. We can adapt there. But it's, it's, it's not even just specifically TikTok. If another social media app comes around, if there's a cultural phenomenon, we need to be ready to adapt as politicians, as... Uh, public servants to be able to make sure that we are passing on that information to where people could hear it. Yeah, I think today, I think BC elections or federal elections said they actually are running a TikTok campaign. So, and so they should have hired you two weeks ago. <laughs> so uh, um, the other one is we're talking about sustainability. I mean, you talked about it earlier, or any. I think most of us uh, are seeing, you know, the floods and um, and sort of the the fires, and you know, I think we're. The changing environment is in front of us, yeah. you know, visually. So, so as the city of Park Coquitlam, sustainability and also the cost to be sustainable. Yeah. You know, what, what's your views on that? So, um, I think that in general, we need to go and take a more long-term view when we're talking about sustainability. Um, we need to seriously look at the city's infrastructure, what's working, what isn't working, and making sure that we're going through and we're investing. Um, if we make, if we prepare for Coquitlam now, even if it does take a little bit more work now, we're going to set our city up for success within the next 20, 30 years. And I think that long-term vision is important to families that are already here and people who want to raise families. Um, so sustainability, affordability, they all work together. Um, I think that we need to probably do a, another environmental assessment plan in the city and seriously take a look and see where the investments need to be made. Um, I had an interview with uh, Force of Nature and uh, just the amount of knowledge some of these groups have on specific things that we can do to protect the city. We need to be relying on experts like them in order to go share their voice. So Force of Nature's there, there's other amazing groups, but we have people who have done the research and are ready to help out council. We just need to make sure that they can be heard. So usually in an election, you know, in, in Port Quitlam, there's the mayor and the six council yeah. uh, people. And in this case, we have, you know, people say, oh, there's one spot available. Yeah. But I would say, no, there's six spots available. Sure. Uh, some people may have a head start. Yeah. So, so if that was only one spot available, 
Uh, what what do you what would you say to uh, the public of Port Coquitlam about why they should vote for you? I think the main thing that I would want to communicate to people is that I am running because I believe the people of Port Coquitlam have amazing ideas. Collectively, we know a lot together. I will do everything I can to be as available as possible. That's also another benefit of being a younger person. I'm not married yet. I don't have kids. I can go through and invest my time in making sure that we're setting up these um, new outreach plans. Uh, we can set up uh, community work groups. There's many things that we could do to go harness our ideas here. Um, I'll say that there are other amazing candidates out there, but really with me, you're getting someone who's going to be a relentless advocate for you. I truly believe in the people of Poco, and if we share our voices, we can go through and really move forward together. I appreciate that. I mean, I mean, Port Coquitlam itself is is made history with a young councillor, you know, uh, Brad West, and now we we're all excited. We have the, a younger mayor, you know, and, and who seems to be popular. So, so I think we kind of have a good uh, sense of of regards of age. You know, I think yeah. sometimes younger is sometimes a fresh voice. Absolutely, and I think just speaking about Mayor West and going on to council at 19, I'll point out that is five years younger than me, so I'm not that young when we're going out here, but. Um, for me as a younger person going through school, because I went to the same high school as Brad West, when I went into the journalism department, uh, people were saying, hey, the editor-in-chief of this newspaper is a city, our former editor-in-chief uh, is a city councilor now. And that's something that for a younger person hearing, hey, I can be young, I can have my voice heard. Um, I think that was really motivating for me growing up and uh, just seeing, yeah, a younger person can get elected mayor, a younger person can be elected councilor. And it doesn't, it shows that um, being younger doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. I think we need people with a wealth, wealth of experiences and young people, especially in today's political climate, have a very unique uh, life experiences that we're all sharing. So uh, again, thank you for coming. Is there, is there anything you want to add that I haven't asked or things that you want to sort of pass on before we, we have to sign off? I think what I want to pass on is the most important thing in this election, in any election, is making sure that people's voices are heard. That's the entire point of a democracy. Um, Port Coquitlam, our last municipal election, unfortunately we had a fairly low voter turnout. I truly believe my campaign would be a success even if I don't get in, if we can increase voter turnout, if more people can go to the polls, because if we go to the polls, that's how we can say, politicians, we're holding you accountable. So if you go uh, vote, you're holding people accountable with their vote. So I hope to earn people's vote, but at the end of the day, I just really hope people can go down to the polls um, because that's how our democracy is going to stay healthy. Well, thanks for coming in, Justin. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So that's Justin Smith. I, I don't know if he's the youngest one to, to run, but, but he is the youngest person we've interviewed or I've interviewed for Tri-Cities Community Television. If you're looking for a fresh voice or a fresh face or even fresh ideas, maybe check out Justin Smith's campaign and uh, see what he's all about. And thank you for watching. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Justin. Pleasure. Thank you.